I've got my true channel jig set up, clamped to my bench here. So we don't want that to move around. And the first part of the guitar that I'm gonna route for the binding will be the back. The back won't get any purfling on this or probably not any purfling. I may change my mind in a bit, little bit. But before we do any of that, we need to make sure that the body is square so that when the true channel jig rides around, it cuts straight. So I've got it in the holder, the cradle, and I'll check the back here. And I'm looking pretty good here at the back. I'll check the front. And the front, there's a small gap up here, which probably in the scheme of things isn't a big deal, but the hardest part of binding is on, particularly on a cutaway, is this area where you transition from the higher part of the back to the lower part. So I wanna make sure I get that as square as possible. So I'm gonna make some adjustments here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and lower this a, a little bit. That looks good right there. So we'll readjust here. And I'm really happy with that. Take a look at the back again. The back looks good. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that you should also check the sides. You wanna make sure that when you come around that you're cutting straight down. So I'll do a quick check on the sides and it's hard to readjust it so that it's perfect, but I'm a little bit off up here, but there's really nothing I can do about this area right here, except maybe raise it up just a hair. So I will do that. and that looks good so we are all set to do the back so I've got the router I've got the true channel set I've got the jig set now it's in time to install a router bit and a bearing to cut the binding. Now, I just want to make a comment about these router bits. People, these don't last forever. I change these uh, probably after about every 10 or 12 guitars that I'm doing. It's a small price to pay overall for tear out and a lot of other problems on your wood as you do the binding. In addition, I do a lot of woods like Coca Bolo and other rose woods, and that wood really wears out this bit quickly. So when I see a bit starting to look a little bit tighter, I'm basically going to get rid of it, and I'm going to start with a brand new bit. I know it doesn't sound like the most frugal thing, but it will save you a lot of headaches down the road. The first job that we're going to do is route the binding for the back. Then we'll route the binding for the top because it has the extra step of routing the channel for the purfling. As I said, I'm not going to put purfling on the back. So I'm going to set the router up to cut the binding. And to do that, I installed the bit you know, just about the height of where I need it to be. And I'll lock it down. Now, 
make sure you lock that tight. There's nothing worse in the world than having a router bit slip as you're binding. And then, well, it's a bad day. So make sure that your router bit is in there secure. And I'll just basically eyeball it for the depth of the binding and then lock it down. The bearing that I need for this, I'll determine by taking the width of the binding, measuring it, and then picking out the right bearing for it. So to do that, I need some calipers. So the binding is coming in at a pretty consistent 0.080 or a little bit less. So what that means is you need to choose the correct bearing so that you're cutting a depth of a little bit less or higher to 0 0.080. And I'll talk about that in just a sec. So what I'll really do if you just want to eyeball it is pick a bearing, put your binding here. That look, actually looks pretty close. So I'm gonna go with that one. And it's just a matter of securing the bit. Now I do not have the router plugged in. Okay. Now that I've got the right wrench, we'll lock that bearing down. You don't need to gorilla tighten it, by the way. Just finger tighten it. Okay. We're all set to go to measure for the correct depth of cut of that binding. To adjust for the depth of the cut, I just hold my binding up and you want the very tip of the binding cutter to fall below. So I just make an adjustment using the micro adjustment on the on the Bosch. There we go. and that looks like it's going to be pretty good but it's a little bit too low so I'm going to come up just a hair you don't want the binding to sit too proud because that will cause a problem when you use the tape to hold it down I'll go over that in a little set in a little bit Okay, that looks pretty good. But we're not gonna do it on the guitar. We're gonna do a test cut on a scrap piece of wood. First of all, I wanna make sure that the router is in the locked position. If it's not, well, you'll have a big surprise as you're routing the binding channel. Time to plug it in.
So we've got a test cut made. Let's check that with the binding. And what I'm looking for is just about a thumbnail of height of the binding, the thickness of your thumbnail. If you have it too high, what will happen is when the tape comes over to wrap it or to anchor it against the side, it'll kick out at the bottom and you don't wanna do that. I'm also looking for the right depth. And I am looking pretty good here. This is sitting just about flush, maybe a little bit proud of it. That's okay. I usually err on the side of having the binding a little bit proud rather than a little bit too deep. If it's too deep, then you have to remove too much material from the sides of the guitar. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna make one more cut though, just to make sure. Now, do yourself a favor and mark that cut with the X because that's your good one. If you did some trial cuts, you'll get them mixed up when you go to set the adjustment for the purfling in the next step. But this looks pretty good. Just a little bit proud about the thickness of my nail and I'm a little bit proud on the outside. So I'd say we're pretty good to go. Okay, time to route the first channel, which is on the back. The general plan of action after setting your depth of cut on a scrap piece is we'll cut the back channel, then we'll flip it over and then do the top one. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a very small test cut on the back here, just to make sure that we're all good. Then I'll stop the router, check it, and then I'll continue on around. One more thing, make sure that you have this little stop installed at the top so when you push the router up, it won't come up out of the jig. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough clearance that the router is gonna perform okay when it comes around, because this is a pretty big box. So time to cut a test and we are good to go. To avoid the possibility of tear out when you do the, uh, when you bind the routing channel, and this is really important when you go to do the top, we're gonna do climb cuts, and we're gonna climb cut this section here down to the waist, from about the bottom of the lower bout down to the tail block, from about the middle of the lower bout up to the waist, and then on up. So I'll do a series of climb cuts, then I'll come back around and do a normal cut. Then what I'll do finally is go all the way around the perimeter in the normal cutting fashion.
doing good. Just one final check, but I'll put the binding in the channel that I just cut and just make sure, and I'm really, really happy with that. I have, as I said, just about a thumbnail bit coming above proud, and then it's lying flat, almost dead flat right against the side. And that will make scraping the binding, finishing, and everything else that goes on from here a lot easier when you take the time to get that cut just right. Now I'll flip it over and do the top. Now that I've got the top up and ready to cut the channel, I wanna check for square one more time with the top because the top really, while it is flat and will cut, you don't wanna cut down at an angle. So it's just a matter of grabbing the square, checking for square here, checking for square here, and then just kind of eyeballing the sides. Just make sure that nothing's way out of whack. But it looks pretty good. Once again, I'm just gonna pull it up and make sure I can clear everything as I come around. And I'm not gonna go off the track or anything. Once again, like I did with the back, I'll make a little test cut here up at the neck, check it one more time, and then I'll go around. And just like with the back, I'll do climb cuts up around here, down here, up to this waist, and then up here. I'm a little bit off balance, so I'll make a slight adjustment there, and we're good. So I'll make the tusk test cut, and then once I'm done with that, I'll cut the rest of the top.
of you are wondering why I didn't put a tail wedge in, I'm going to be doing what's called a boxed end wedge after I have all the binding installed. So now it's a matter of just setting up for the inside purfling. So to do that, I have to change the bearing on the router and then do some test cuts. I have a very simple black, white, black purfling. So it's just a matter of making an adjustment to the bearing and the depth, setting it up with the test cut, and then we'll cut the purfling channel. Now, when you buy this bearing set, you'll also get some of these little brass washers. And what those are used for is to drop the bearing down below far enough so it doesn't have the possibility of riding into the binding channel you just cut and throwing you all off. So make sure you put those little brass washers on before you install the bearing for the purfling channel. Now, I'm sure there's a really scientific way of choosing the right bearing to cut the purfling channel, but all I do is I take the binding, a piece of the purfling, and measure it. And here I'm coming in at one four one inch. So all I need to do is put a bearing on here and eyeball it so that my outside from the distance of the bearing to the end of the cutting edge is about one four one and that bearing looks to be pretty close so i'm going to try that as a test one and we'll cut a little test piece and see how that works once again i do have the router unplugged when doing this okay now we'll take a piece of our scrap and cut a test cut with where I mark the X. Before proceeding, we have to adjust the depth of cut to the depth of the purfling. And once again, I want it to come up, or I want it to be proud by just a little bit so that I can sand it back. So I'll lock it. Take my purfling, eyeball it, man, it's looking pretty good, but I'm going to come down just a hair. Check that again. That looks pretty good. And once again, I'm going to make sure I'm in the locked position. and I'm cutting too deep.
looks to be just about right. The depth of the cut was right, or rather the, yeah, the depth of the cut, but the width was off. The width is not enough. The purfling's coming out too much, which is not a good thing. So I have to change the bearing to a slightly smaller one. Once again, I did a small test cut just to make sure <clears throat> that the binding was going to work. And we're all good. Yep. So now I can continue on with the rest of the purfling channel. Now, in the process of doing all that binding cutting with the router, I managed to break one of the binding strips. What I normally do, or I would tell people to do, always make yourself an extra one or two binding strips because this is the type of thing that can happen. I didn't do that though. I thought I would be frugal and save a few bucks by only cutting or only bending four. So I might as well use this chance to show you how to bend binding. Normally, or at least when I did it with this one, I bend it with the sides. But if you don't do that and you just have to bend some binding without the sides, I want to show you how to do it. 